Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first Mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next comment or question comes from Madness. Not madness as in the group, but madness. Um, and this one is in response to the Yamaha SY85, a video I did in April 2020 about this machine that's sitting beside me. Um, great history lesson. That's really sent me down a, tri a, mem a trip down memory lane. The Yamaha TG55 and SY55 and TG55 had no synthesizer, FM synthesizer engine whatsoever. They used AM2 as the synthesis basis for their synthesis. The SY35 was basically a slightly improved or SY22 with more voice presets. A Yamaha's AWM2 was uh, you know, more powerful than Korg's AI with its digital resonance features and the ability to layer up four AWM elements to the same time. Korg's AI only allowed two oscillators per program and its low pass, pass filter had no resonance. Saying that, I had much preferred Korg's overall sound and user interface, having owned a T3EX for over 25 years. I can remember correctly the TG500 that had twice the polyphony of the SY85. Both had fantastic factory voices and made the instrument sound much better than the older uh, SY77 and SY99, despite the former instruments having FM synthesis to go along with AWM2, and the RCM synthesis allowing the FM and AWM2 engines to work together. Well, thanks for the feedback. Uh, I'm glad the video brought back memories. Um, because the number in sequence, many people think that the SY99 was the last of the SY sequence, and it wasn't. The SY85, this machine, takes that glory being released a year after the SY99. And, and of course, being typical of the SY range, only the SY77 and SY99 actually have anything in common. All the other SY synthesizers um, basically are completely isolated synths that just carry the SY name. Um, yes, the TG500 did report uh, 64 voices, and I haven't used one of these for more than 25 years, so I can't remember if it was patch one um, that could use all 64, or two patch layer that gave you 64 voices. It's so long ago, I just can't remember one way or the other. Maybe somebody put me right. Um, but for versatility, the SY85 puts it above the SY77, but I do enjoy playing both. Uh, I will, in the next few weeks, be fixing the floppy drive on the SY77. Now, this was written, obviously, back in April, sorry, Mar uh, May 2022, and I haven't got round to fixing it. I've got all the parts, I just haven't got round to fixing it yet, because got, I've got to take it to pieces, and because of how ill I've been, I just haven't felt like it. Um, but I will bring the SY77 back into use. And obviously the other thing is, since doing that, I've also acquired an SY99, uh, both of which are off in storage. So uh, that's got a, a, a dead key on it. Uh, as far as I can see, nothing else is actually broken on the SY99. So I, that, that was a, an absolute steal. Um, but yeah, uh, the SY977 will be brought back into use and then um, as I say, it's a completely different synthesis. I, I complete, this is this is more of a uh, a PCM sampler as the basis of the sound generation, whereas the 77 is uh, AWM2 and FM as the basis of the sound generation. So, completely different ideas. Um, again, as I say, SY SY range of synthesizers completely different. 
Next question or comment comes from Mike Edwards uh, in response to playing the Behringer RD8 with your keyboard, a video I did in September 2020. Um, and it's to do with the general MIDI standard or, or GM. If you wanted a, your module to be a GM compatible and play um, back general MIDI files, you would need the drums on channel 10. And this is also the reason why mapping is standard, clap is on D sharp, closed hi hat is F sharp. Uh, they all follow the general MIDI standard. And uh, all I can say is, well, thanks, Mike, for looking, taking the effort and looking. I was trying to remember whether the specific channels were actually enshrined into the standard or whether this was just an industry convention. But as you point out, it's actually built into the standard for cross-device compa compatibility. Um, and those that follow the thread and want to reach the actual standard, I actually put a link in the original question or the original answer to www.midi.org, which is where the standard is written. Um, and there's lots of junk in there, but there's lots of answers of why does MIDI work the way MIDI works. So if you're at all interested, go and have a look.